I want you to picture this. You're running at the beach as fast as you can to beat your previous run. You push yourself forward and you finally stop and catch your breath. You check your watch and you notice you achieved the best run time you've had so far in your life. To make your victory even sweeter, you achieved a new PR in the weight room just a week earlier. Those achievements are going to be a great gift to yourself for your upcoming birthday. But you're not in your 20s and not even in your 30s, but in your 80s. What's up guys, welcome back. And I want to talk about how tech billionaires are trying to cure aging and why that might be a good thing. In Cyberpunk 2077, some characters like Hanako and Carrie Uridine look like they're in their 20s despite being closer to a century old. But could real world science actually achieve that feat? Well, there are many well-funded organizations and wealthy individuals in the recent years who are looking to make that sci-fi future a reality. And the anti-aging field has exploded not just for humans, but the Dog Aging Projects aims to extend life for the good boys. Now, why try and reverse aging? Well, there are both medical and economic reasons. When it comes to health, many of the diseases such as Alzheimer's, heart disease, osteoporosis, high blood pressure, hearing loss, cataracts, diabetes, you get the picture, are increased with aging. Medicare often focuses on these separate issues rather than addressing the root cause. Think of it this way. Say we wanted a vaccine for COVID. We don't develop a separate vaccine for COVID-related breathing problems, another for COVID-related blood clots, another for loss of taste, loss of smell, fever, tiredness, body aches, and so on. If someone proposed that we have a separate vaccine for each of those problems related to COVID, we would think that's one of the dumbest ideas ever. Yet, we've been trying to cure diseases like Alzheimer's for decades using this approach, but we've made very little progress. That single disease alone, Alzheimer's, is projected to cost society $1 trillion per year by 2050 if no further progress is made. To put this in perspective, this amount of money and this problem will become more expensive than all the wars in the Middle East combined. And as for more economic benefits of aging research, you've heard of population boom and overpopulation, I'm sure, but have you heard of population bust? Well, right now, due to rising inflation, the cost of living, increased inequality, and other factors, couples in developed countries are having less children. Now, that is something that you might think is well and good in terms of controlling population but the problem is you end up with much more young people than retired elderly that are working so you end up with the situations where the young are supporting the healthcare costs and that burden becomes heavy on the younger populations that are working what anti-aging research wants to do is instead of focusing on individual health issues related to aging, is they want to focus on what they call the seven pillars of aging. They are adaptation to stress, epigenetic, inflammation, macromolecular damage, metabolism, proteostasis, stem cells, and regeneration. Companies such as Altos Labs, Google Calico, Sense Research, VitaDAO, and others are tackling this problem through rejuvenation technologies. Many wealthy individuals like Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, Yuri Milner, and Vitalik Buterin, and others are contributing donations towards the research or even starting startups themselves. Hex founder Richard Hart, for example, helped raise over $25 million for the Sense project through his Crypto Hex airdrop. Just recently, we received news that billionaire Jeff Bezos created a $3 billion startup called Altos Lab with the goal of using cellular reprogramming 
to halt or even reverse aging. It will also focus on reversing the effects of age-related illnesses for people living longer lives so that their health span can also be long and they can be vital for the rest of their lives. Now, there's been a lot of speculation about this startup, but we recently had confirmation. The team is stacked with experts and scientists who have knowledge of biology and have extensive research backgrounds. They're promising large salaries and unrestricted funding for research. The team is not only based in the US, but also in Cambridge, UK, and they'll have significant collaborations in Japan. They're focusing a lot on cellular health and reprogramming and epigenetics. They're researching ways to rejuvenate cells and reset their epigenetic clocks and reverse cellular damage. So what changed in recent years to create all this optimism? Well, currently they have been encouraging results of drugs that could get rid of senescent cells. Now, what are senescent cells? They're zombie cells that have stopped functioning in your body, including replication, and they build up more and more as you age, causing inflammation within the body. It might be a big step forward in aging treatment if we could move through clinical trials to the human public because in a recent study, we've shown senescent cells removal have been improving the health of old mice at the Mayo Clinic, as you can see from this image here. These treatments have become even more necessary in the current world as COVID has been found to increase cellular senescence in the body. So perhaps if we could remove the senescent cells, it could be a treatment that could help those suffering from long-term COVID. We are also developing much better ways of measuring and quantifying biological aging. For example, researchers at Columbia University have developed a new aging blood test that uses chemical tags on the DNA called methylation marks. There's also been experiments in giving young blood plasma to old mice, resulting in a 54% decrease in their aging. Not only that, there have been other advances such as 3D bioprinting companies like Ossiform who are able to print out replacement parts for the bodies such as bone implants. Yamanaka factors discovered by the Japanese scientist Shinya Yamanaka. And speaking of Yamanaka, he recently became Alto's lab's senior scientific advisors. So these factors are factors that can convert adult cells into stem cells. What this could allow, for example, is if you have a patient and you wanted to have a heart operation, you can take their skin cells, transfer those skin cells into heart cells and use them for whatever you need to do for the operation. There's also a startup called Selino, which recently got 80 million to automate stem cell production through machine learning and laser editing. Previously, stem cells were handmade in a lab. Selino aims to build autonomous stem cell factories by 2025. We also have Exaflop supercomputers arriving, and those will help further advance research as a whole, as supercomputers have been a big part of research for the global scientific community. And there's also developments in replacing parts of the body with electronic components, but that will be the focus of another video. In the end, even if we don't succeed in reversing aging, but we alleviate suffering in the elderly from age-related diseases, it would be a very worthwhile endeavor. It would be great for the economy as well as personal well-being of individuals who are suffering and their families and create new jobs for scientists. Some people believe, and some researchers included, believe the first person to live to a thousand years has already been born, but we'll have to wait and see. Personally, I want to look good when I'm 90. I don't want to be not able to go to the gym because I have a hip problem. I want to live strong and healthy for the rest of my life and 
we'll see how it goes. Anyway, if you like what you saw and heard, be sure to subscribe and like so I can make more videos and get more content. And see you soon.